The problem with Belle's dress. This probably would have been a more relevant topic three years ago, but I didn't have a YouTube channel then, so you're getting it now. Let me start by saying that I don't think every costume in the live-action Beauty and the Beast film is bad. The costumes of nearly all of the supporting characters are absolutely fantastic, but because many of the costume shortcomings happen to the film's lead character, it's hard to focus on anything else. There's nothing wrong with liking the costumes if you do, it's all a matter of opinion anyway. I'm just sharing mine. I want to bring attention to the places where the film fell short in regard to Belle's costumes and how it potentially could have been better. And I'm not disparaging or bashing Jacqueline Durant's work. Costuming and designing for a film is more difficult than I could ever imagine. And she's done lots of amazing work over the course of her career. I just think that in regard to this film in particular, there were some missteps here and there. So let's get into it. The Animation to Live Action Conundrum it's difficult to translate an animated piece of clothing into live action. That's just a fact. Besides drawings not having to bend to the will of gravity, you can also use colors that aren't easily found in real life. Picture the animated Cinderella. What color do you remember her dress being? Blue? Well, you'd be wrong. It's a sparkling silver. But over the years through various live action adaptations and Disney's own marketing for their princess brand, many of us associate Cinderella with the color blue. That was the color picked for Cinderella's gown in the 2015 live-action adaptation, but it still gave off the shimmering magical quality of the original animated version, even if they barely looked alike. These differences and similarities allow the audience to reminisce about the original, but still have both dresses stand on their own. In every Disney animated film, the princess dress is the biggest reveal of the whole movie. It's the moment we're all waiting for. Whether it's Elsa's ice gown, Tiana's wedding dress, or Aurora's color-changing gown, they're show-stopping and the stuff of dreams. In the Cinderella adaptation, her dress lives up to that expectation. The same can't be said for Belle's live-action dress. In the original animated film, Belle's dress has detailing that makes it appear gold, but in Disney's marketing, it's yellow. A decision which of course makes its way into the live-action film because capitalism, and we've gotta sell Halloween costumes. Instead of the luxe gold fabric that many of us hoped for and expected, we wound up with a single-toned pastel yellow with sparse gold embroidery. It's a far cry from the shimmering gold gown that Belle wears in the original. Even if you were going for a different silhouette than the one that appears in the animated film, it's a shame that the golden color was taken away. If they'd added layers of different fabrics and more golden embroidery, it could have given off the appearance of having more depth and have exuded a little bit more of the magic that the original had. Historical inaccuracy. Let's begin by discussing artistic liberty and how it pertains to costume design specifically. Artistic liberty essentially means making creative choices that stray from historical accuracy to either help set an aesthetic for the film, make it more interesting, or help with world building and character development. Examples of this being done well, in my opinion, are The Great Gatsby and Anna Karenina. The costumes in both films are wildly inaccurate for the respective time periods they take place in, but the decisions are constant throughout the film on all members of the cast and help solidify the more modern take on both films. A movie that didn't do this so well? 1963's Cleopatra. Instead of the historical inaccuracies looking like a stylistic choice, it actually seems more like the costume designers didn't know what else to do and couldn't be bothered to do any research. The dresses have your typical 60s era cut and styling, just with random embroidery. That doesn't mean they don't look great, because it does, but you could pin most of that on Elizabeth Taylor, not the dresses themselves. There are only a few dresses that are actually memorable in that film, and most wind up looking like Halloween costumes. Obviously, demanding historical accuracy from a fictional Disney movie might be a waste of time to begin with. But in the case of this movie, we have just cause to be peeved. Let's go through what we know about the time period the movie is meant to be in. Firstly, it obviously happens in France. The original tale is not only from there, but the characters' names and dialogue confirms this for us. We get bits and pieces of other information that teach us about the time period through Gaston's time in the war, which is probably the War of Austrian Succession or the Seven Years' War, as well as the knowledge that Belle and her father lived through the plague. This lets us pin the time period somewhere in the middle of the 1700s. The style of fashion that was most popular with the upper class around this time was the late Baroque style, aka Rococo. The Rococo era was all about being extravagant, elegant, and excessive. Think of Marie Antoinette with her giant wigs and poofy dresses, that kind of situation. The common folk, of course, dressed more simply, with style remaining constant for the majority of that century. 
The issue I have with accuracy in this film is that it picks and chooses when it wants to be. Belle's peasant dress? Mostly accurate, albeit minus a corset. Even her little jacket in this scene is accurate. This makes her ball gown and wedding gown all the more jarring because she's previously been shown to wear accurate pieces. It's an even bigger issue when you see her standing alongside characters who are mostly dressed correctly. During the ballroom scene, you see Belle stroll in in a little flowy thing that basically looks like the dress from The Prince and Me, but in yellow. Her sleeves are too short and I need someone to explain to me why she is wearing a gold ear cuff. Even the prince in all of his hairy glory is actually wearing something about 90% accurate to the time period. So imagine if instead of the structureless yellow dress you wound up with in the film, we actually had gotten something with elegant sleeves and an exaggerated skirt. Something a little bit like this, or maybe this. And if your first thought is, oh that wouldn't fit in with the rest of the movie, just look at some of these other outfits that the supporting characters wear. Take this early scene from the movie for instance. The women are wearing accurate robe a la Française, the most popular dress style in France from the 1740s through the 1760s. It's got the side hoops, the pleats, the petticoats, the little cape, even the trim on the dresses is mostly accurate. Isn't it a bit odd that the lead character doesn't have the fanciest dress? And I also want to take a minute to discuss the corsets, or lack of them. During the press for this movie, Emma Watson was very vocal about the fact that she made the decision to not wear a boned corset during this movie as a feminist statement. While that's all well and good, there's one problem with that. Corsets at the time weren't a torture device meant to stifle women's freedoms, shrink their waist down, or prevent them from being able to breathe. That's what they're more commonly associated with today, thanks to repeated references to that in films like Pirates of the Caribbean and Gone with the Wind. But corsets at the time were roughly the equivalent of a bra today they actually served a structural purpose. There were a variety of different types of corsets, including a more rigid version and a softer unboned version. Back then, you needed a corset in order to wear the clothes, and the corset actually helped maintain the integrity of the garments and actually keep you from feeling weighed down by them. It would help support both your back and your front. The choice to not wear a corset with one of these dresses would roughly be the modern day equivalent of going for a five mile jog while wearing a weighted vest without wearing a sports bra. It'd be really uncomfortable. And considering what I know about Jacqueline Duran's previous work, I don't doubt that this decision to not wear a boned corset inevitably affected the silhouette of the gown. What are your thoughts on Belle's dress? Did you love it? Hate it? Make sure to like and subscribe for more fun content, and I'll see you soon. Bye!